In this video, I'll go over some sample problems relating to definitions, diagrams, and inverses of functions and relations. This first question asks us to draw a portion of the bubble and arrow diagram for the function f, which goes from n to z, the natural numbers as the domain, and the integers as the codomain. And the formula for this function is given by f of n equals 13 minus 3n. So when we talk about bubble and arrow diagrams, we're going to have two bubbles. The first bubble is going to be our domain, which in this case is the natural numbers. Our second bubble is going to be the codomain, which in this case is the integers. And we're typically asked to give some number of examples. In this case, they ask us for at least five elements of the domain and five elements of the codomain. So since the domain is natural numbers, it would make sense to start with numbers like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And all we need to do is figure out what is the associated codomain element for each of these domain elements. So in other words, we just need to plug each domain element in. So f of 0 is 13 minus 3 times 0. That's 13. So over in the integers, we have the integer 13. And there's going to be an arrow pointing from 0 to 13. We plug in 1. We get f of 1 is 13 minus 3 times 1. That's 10. So in the integers, we have an arrow pointing from 1 to 10. If we're worried about 11 and 12, in this case, we don't have any arrows pointing to 11 and 12. So we could put those dots there, but we wouldn't have any arrows that point to those dots. f of 2 turns out to be 7, f of 3 turns out to be 4, and f of 4 turns out to be 1. And so that's just part of the diagram that this function would give us. So this is a similar problem, but this time we're talking about a relation. So a relation is different from a function because for a function, for each domain element, you have to have one and only one codomain element associated with that domain element. For a relation, you can have any kind of association you want between domain elements and codomain elements. But the bubble and arrow diagram is going to start out the same way. We have our domain. We have our codomain. In this case, our domain is 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And again, we can put dots if we want. And then our codomain is A, E, I, O, U, those five letters. And now the rule is that we have an ordered pair N comma V if the vowel V appears in the English spelling of the number N. So if we have that pairing, then we draw an arrow. So in this case, the word zero contains the vowel E and the vowel O. So we're going to draw an arrow from zero to the letter E and from 0 to the letter O. And already we can tell that this is not a function because we have more than one arrow pointing out of a domain element, and so we already have violated the rule for this being a function, but it's still a perfectly fine relation. Next we have the word 1, which also has an O and an E, so 1 points to E and 1 points to O. The word 2 only contains O, so 2 only points to O. Now, even though we only have one arrow pointing out of the two, this still isn't a function because we, any time we have a relation where you have more than one arrow pointing out of a dot, that's, that just breaks. It's not a function at that point. Three only contains the vowel E, so three points to E. And then four contains the vowels O and U, so four points to O and four points to U. So this, in, in this case, we have the complete bubble and arrow diagram for this relation. Notice that A and I don't have any arrows pointing to them. That's okay. It's still a perfectly fine relation. If we wanted to list the ordered pairs, the ordered pairs here would be 0, comma, E, 0, comma, O, 1, comma, E, 1, comma, O, and so on. 2, comma, O, 3, comma, E, 4, comma, O, and 4, comma, U. If we put those together into a set, that is the relation E written as a set of ordered pairs. All right, finally, we have a question about inverse functions. So we're given this function. The domain and the codomain are both Q, the set of rational numbers. And we have a formula f of x equals 2x minus 6. So what we're looking for is a new function G, whose domain is the same as the codomain that f had and whose codomain is the same as the domain of f. So in this case, it's still going to be from q to q. And we want it to be true that f of a equals b if and only if g of b equals a. So in other words, any ordered pair that's associated with a function f, the reverse of that ordered pair is associated with a function g. So the way we're going to find this is we're going to say to ourselves, well, f of a equaling b well, f of a is 2a minus 6, and if that equals b, what we'd really like to do is solve that equation for a. 
which we can do pretty easily. We add 6 to both sides and divide both sides by 2. We get 1 half b plus 3. And that's actually going to be our formula for g of b. g of b is going to be 1 half b plus 3. Because remember, we want that to be a, so that's going to be our formula. So g of x will be 1 half x plus 3. Let's just do 3. Let's fix that. 3. Okay. So that's how we find a formula. But now we have to prove that our answer is correct, which means we actually have to prove this if and only if. Now, proving an if and only if is two if-thens. We have to prove if f of a equals b, then g of b equals a. And we also have to prove if g of b equals a, then f of a equals b. But both of those are relatively simple proofs. So we're going to start here by saying suppose f of a equals b. Well, that means that 2a minus 6, that's f of a, equals b. And now our goal is to talk about what g of b is. So what's g of b? So now g of b, that's g of 2a minus 6, because that's what b is. Now I plug into the g formula. So the g goes away, actually. So I plug into the g formula, and I get 1 half times the x, the thing I plugged in, which would be 2a minus 6, plus 3. And I work out all that algebra, and it does, in fact, work out to be a. Similar thing for the other direction. So this time, I would suppose that g of b equals a. And again, that would mean that 1 half b plus 3 would equal a, because that's the formula for my g function. And I would say now, well, what's f of a? I want that to be b, but that's f of 1 half b plus 3. Plug into the f formula, so that's 2 times the thing you plugged in, 1 half b plus 3, minus 6, and work all that all the algebra, and it works out to be b. And that checks that direction as well. So that's the basic structure. So you use the inverse relationship to find the formula for the thing that you want, and then you prove that the formula actually works.